Hello everybody. I'm just making a short video about the uh, Lanxiang or Blitz RC Works SR71 kit uh, for radio control. Uh, just in case this might help some people who are building or getting into this uh, into this jet, um, uh, you know, for the first time, or or just to give share some ideas, some things I found out about the jet along the way, uh, you know, that helped me with my builds. Uh, this is my fourth SR71. Uh, I didn't really know much about them when I first got them. I crashed my first one pretty much immediately. But uh, make a long story short, if you're just getting into this jet, um, it may not be a bad idea uh, to purchase the ARF version, uh, which will come with the stock motors here. Uh, this, they don't have the uh, KVs marked on these motors, but uh, these seem like a little bit of an upgrade compared to the ones that were uh, originally with the kit years ago. Um, and, you know, it, it probably, you know, again, with, with just a single battery will work fine for you. And we'll give you an introduction to the uh, aircraft. I, um, uh, you know, wanted to go ahead and hop up the power, which I did. I eventually ended up buying some Cyclone power motors. Uh, these had six-bladed fans. They put out about, well, they ate about 55 amps, whereas the stock motors here only ate about uh, 25 to 30 amps, I guess. And um, anyway, if you if you feel them side by side inside the EDF slots here, you'll 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 feel the thrust is quite a bit more. I wouldn't say it's twice as much, but it's quite a bit more. I don't have any numbers for you, unfortunately. But since uh, I, I just burned out my other motor like this uh, recently, and uh, since this is a new build, uh, since that time there have now become available twelve bladed fan versions of the sixty four millimeter EDFs, which I have on order, but I don't have here in front of me uh, today. But it doesn't really matter for the purposes of this video. I just want to show um, uh, some things about this, this kit that I think uh, are, are helpful to a, a builder. Um, uh, let's see, to begin with, well, if, like I said, you could start with the ARF if you don't. One nice thing about it is uh, when you buy the kit is it's still, in, uh, you know, things are opened up so that you have a chance to go ahead and customize your build. Uh, for instance, these have 80 amp ESCs, and as I mentioned, I'm getting 12 bladed uh, fans, um, which have about the same thrust as my upgraded Cyclone Powers one, ones did. Another mod that I made to this kit, um, rather clumsily, but you can see here, uh, I opened up this area, which is normally closed, to give more uh, more uh, inflow air, what they call the cheater holes. Uh, since uh, the, these engines are pulling almost twice the thrust, um, it's not a bad idea to give it more inlet air, and so we'll see how that goes. It should be fine. One thing I wanted to draw attention to that I found out right away with this kit, uh, particularly if you are going to hop up the engines and go a little faster, uh, is the push rods here on this uh, uh, Elevon mixing kind of uh, setup um, tended to push. The hinge is right behind here. The hinge for this is right behind inside here. would literally push the hinge right out of the foam. So when I got the model new, before I did anything else, I actually used an X-Acto knife to notch out an area in the foam so I could see the exposed part of the pin in there on both sides, on, 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 this, on the uh, uh, back of the uh, you know, main wing surface here also. So you could actually see the pin uh, in the foam. And then I uh, poured an epoxy, five-minute epoxy, rather sloppily as you can see. But the point about it is that pin will not move now. And, and as that push rod pushes for, up, for pitch up, and it pushes on this, it won't be pushing the pin out. Of course, you could rehinge the surfaces as well. If you like that idea, that's certainly fine. Um, you know, again, just a little bit of notching uh, to make more room for the uh, ESCs. Um, I ended up putting the transmitter in this compartment. If you've watched other videos of mine, you'd notice that I've done the same thing. Uh, the wheels uh, that they give you at the kit are sort of a hard plastic, and I prefer these uh, foam neoprene ones. Um, for all three, uh, and, and I got those off of a Dynam kit for the uh, Citation jet, little private jet that they have, Dynam. The wheels are nearly the same, uh, you know, uh, and you're able to, with switching around the hubs and whatnot, you're able to go ahead and get those on there. Um, and I just think they track better on, on the uh, pavement when you're doing your takeoff run. I often land this on the grass, gear up. It's just easier, I find. It's, um, you know, you don't have to worry as much about the go-around. Um, again, you could hop up the landing gear. This I haven't quite put the landing gear in yet because I haven't, I haven't glued this down finally. That's my last step. But if you look inside here, one thing you'll notice is that you know, I've got a CC Beck uh, handling the uh, uh, power requirements. So both of these ESCs are opto. And, uh, and then I have you know, an octopus uh, for the power coming up to this, these front areas where I've added another battery compartment. And together with the uh, 
with the transmitter compartment, or excuse me, receiver compartment, the original receiver compartment, even though there's a gap there, you, you can put three batteries into this setup by putting another splitter on here, sorry, by putting another splitter on one of these ends and you'd have three. I found that running this um, on two 2700 milliamp Thunder Power batteries was a good setup on 4S. Yeah, I've flown it with three, uh, it makes it very uncontrollable. I mean, this airframe, again, was designed for a single battery. Uh, and f I'm sure it flies very well that way. Uh, but if you want to make it a high performance uh, setup, uh, you know, it's two batteries, it flies very well, but you're only going to get about uh, three minutes out of it. So just something to consider. Um, what else? I guess that's about it, you know. Um, uh, obviously, keep it as light as you can during the builds. Um, oh, one, one more very important thing I nearly forgot. Uh, when you notch out this area here to make room for an extra battery bay or whatever, I just put foam in there sometimes, little little foam pads here to make sure the batteries stay in place. Uh, so if you're you know running two batteries, I run one in the back and one in the far front. Whereas if, if you had the ARF kit, you just have this front battery and that's all you'd have. Um, uh, but just so you can see, you, you may not be able to see this very well, but there are uh, carbon fiber rods uh, that I've glued in here. Uh, and they extend from here and on this side too, and there's one along the bottom there. You can see this. Uh, so when you join the neck, uh, excuse me, the, the nose of the aircraft to the body, I've got three points in a three-dimensional you know, setup there to give it added strength. You know, And especially if you're gonna have three batteries up there, you, you probably want that. Anyway, I haven't had any trouble with that kind of setup before. Before I used wooden dowels, but obviously carbon fiber being lighter material is a better way to go. And, uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. Uh, hope you have a great flying. Bye now.